We've just been balancing the ledger, finding out how we went to the races yesterday, both unfortunately in the red. How are you, Keith? I'm well, thanks, Bruce. And of course, racing centred at uh, Rose Hill in Sydney yesterday, and what a fantastic day of racing. What a day of drama, too. Oh, incredible. In fact, it's been a week of drama uh, with Better Loosen Up, Kingston Town and all those horrible things that have happened. But the best thing that happened in racing yesterday happened to Shane Dye, who joins us this morning in our Sports World studio. Shane rode four winners yesterday, including the Golden Slipper and the BMW. Shane, they've described it as the greatest single day in Australian racing history for any jockey. You must be feeling on top of the world. Yeah, it was just an unbelievable day, Bruce, and everything went my way. And I could have made it five in the last. I come close, so it would have been unbelievable. We were talking, Shane, about a day of emotion. The slipper was won by a horse called, well, how do you pronounce it? Tears or Taze? Tell you the truth, Keith, I don't really care. <laughs> What's it matter? <laughs> but I suppose a day could be uh, called a day of tears because you were quite emotional and uh, trainer Clary Connors was emotional. And of course, punters, which is not your area, were quite emotional when the odds on favourite missed a place too. Yeah, well, um, yesterday was the greatest day of my life in racing and um, it was even better than winning the, my first Melbourne Cup. Um, it was the ultimate yesterday. Well, we should point out to the viewers that are not racing experts that Shane won the Golden Slipper for the third consecutive year yesterday. It's an amazing performance, something that probably will never be bettered again. Shane, you rode both Terse and a Bold Promise a couple of weeks ago in their lead-up races. You said at the time you didn't think there was much between them. Were you confident that the Colt could beat the filly? Well, I wasn't real confident. I thought there was only two chances in the race, which I stated in the press all week, and that was Bold Promise and my horse, Terse and uh, luckily I was on the right one on the day. I think Bold Promise did race a bit below her best yesterday and she's a better filly than what indicated yesterday. Shane, can I put it to you, can I ask you whether you would have switched mounts had Mick Dittman been unavailable to ride Bold Promise? No, no possible way. Um, I was speaking to my wife about it actually and I said I hope Mick can ride because I had nothing to gain by riding Bold Promise because Mick was always going to get back on her. And I would have looked a mug if I'd got off Terse to ride Bold Promise and Terse had won, which he did. And then I couldn't have got back on. So I would have stayed with Terse no matter what. Well, Shane, you didn't look like a mug. You looked like a champion yesterday. We'll go to the Golden Slipper. It's a, a very significant start. Bold Promise in the green is slowly away. Let's go to the world's richest two-year-old race. A couple of the riders not happy, but they're off in the slipper. Bull Promise missed the kick. Bull Promise is a clear last out of the starting gate. Sormani began brilliantly and so did Cloudlet Vionne and Chief Headhunter going very fast soon after the start. Big Dreams has bounded away into a beautiful spot and then raise a Rhythm and Canonize is trapped out deep, followed by Terse Jester Royale. Bull Promise improving quickly along the fence and then Umatilla followed by Diddy Do It. Pippi War second last and tailed off his Chardé. Vionne went to the lead through the gap onto the course proper by a little more than a length to Sormani on the outside of Cloudlet and then raise a rhythm big dreams and right off the track canonized followed by Terse who's hard ridden at the head of the others chief headhunter Jester Royale can't get on the track Bull Promise midfield on the fence and she'll need luck to get through that bunch of horses further back as Yuma Tiller followed by Diddy Do It but heads a turn for home in the slipper and Vionne is clear Vionne by more than a length to Cloudlet followed by canonize and then uh, raise a rhythm Terse starting to wind up at the head of the others big dreams and Bull Promise not doing enough. Vionne still in front. Canonize and Terse. Big Dreams can't reach them. Vionne tackled by Terse and Canonize. It's another one for Shane Dye. Terse wins the slipper. Terse beat Canonize. Third Big Dreams. Yes, a remarkable performance. Uh, Shane Quartzer and also Kenny Ladd, the other two horses you rode to victory. In a way, both of them didn't go on to be great horses. They were outstanding two year olds. They played cameo roles as three year olds. Will Terse go on to be a classic horse at three, do you think? Well, it's hard to say, you know, um, you are correct, they haven't gone on courts and Kenny Ladd to, to live up to their reputations. I probably would think Kenny Ladd was a bit better horse than this horse too, um, but there's no reason why he shouldn't. He's a beautiful individual and he's going to develop into a lovely three-year-old and he's just learning to race and he settles. So, you know, he should be able to run a mile very easy and really he hasn't had a hard campaign and Clary's looked after him to this stage and done a great job, so really he should go on. And more immediately, Shane, is he going to shoot for the Triple Crown, the AJC um, Sires and the Champagne Stakes? It looks likely um, Clary was going to make up his mind early in the week. He was just going to wait and see how the horse pulled up, pulled up. But, you know, the major job is over now. His major job was to win the Golden Slipper, so the rest are just bonuses. Shane, what's the key to riding in the Golden Slipper? It's a helter-skelter event. It's uh, over the years been very much known for the interference that takes place. You've won it three years in a row. You must have the key to success there. Well, as I've always said, there's only two or three 
or one possible horse who can win the race every year. And you've got to get on that horse. If you're not on the right horse, you just won't win it. And they go very, very fast, and you can't be within four or five lengths of them. You've just got to get back, and you must have a clear run.